Yes, thank you, and uh, all very valuable contributions. Uh, maybe three points. Uh, one, of course, is terminology, and I also see that uh, we have it in the uh, a question, which is uh, the question I see in the mm -hmm. uh, here. What, can we design work-based learning outside the system? Now, <laughs> I think we can have endless discussion on terminology, yeah. and it will not help us because anyway, it creates a lot of confusion. We have these terms; they exist. Uh, maybe just to say how I see it, but I have no, uh, let's say, um, uh, right to say that you have to see it the same way. <laughs> so, but for me, work-based learning is, is a very broad, is the broadest concept. This includes also everything related in schools, can be simulation, for instance, which plays now in the digital world quite an important role. Uh, it could be sort of even, uh, you know, in a bed school, you have a restaurant, uh, and you learn, you learn the experience of that. That all includes work-based learning. Uh, we use the word apprenticeship uh, in a broad sense, meaning a bit how you explained it. But for us, it's a combination of, um, uh, it's a program combining a school-based part with a work-based part in a company. By the way, we're talking a lot about digital. So in, in a way, it should also include some digital elements, which can be either in a school or in a, in, a, in a company. And by the way, we also have not even this, we also have intercompany training centers sometimes. So uh, a little bit what Irene said, it's the continuum, you know, it's this combination of everything. Of course, then we have some countries with a, a long traditional apprenticeship where they would say there's a, that's more the narrow approach of apprenticeship which for me is this employer-led apprenticeship where actually the, the program starts and the, the, the company hires you, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have this diversity coming from a school-based uh, system to, uh, let's say, a, a company or industry-led system. I would say the, 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 the one extreme we had was uh, the UK, where it was only industry. They called an apprenticeship, even if it was 100% in a company, there was no learning component there. It was simply on the job. They have changed the system as well. They have now 20% at least should happen in a school. So for us, apprenticeship is this combination. Um, and then of course, uh, you can use apprenticeship in the different vet systems. You can only think it's for young people, but nowadays we open it up to adults and you can use it as well for sure for higher education. We have dual studies. We have uh, apprenticeship degrees. We have a lot of models which also follow the higher education. Just on the terminology, I think uh, uh, at least if you talk to each other, if you know what you're talking about, that's enough. Yeah. I mean, we don't need to harmonize and we still get requests mm -hmm. to harmonize uh, the systems at European level. And I, I'm not a fan of harmonization. And uh, <laughs> I can give you just an example. In Germany, we have a federal system and people say, why in COVID you don't have the same rule all over Germany? Because it's easy. Yeah, but uh, does it really help? Because you need to have flexible approaches. In one region, there are no COVID cases and in others you have. So why do you, you need to react differently? And let's not forget about our culture which is so important, the way we have established our systems, education system, you cannot change it within one year. It takes time. This, this, these reforms need to be rooted. You need to have all the key players. They have to be convinced. Employers need to be convinced to invest. If not, it will not fly. So that's why for me, uh, at the end, what counts is that the, the, those people who work together uh, are work are convinced what they do. Now, uh, the second point I would like to raise is the tools. And there I'm a bit with Adam, of course, every new tool uh, has the risk that it will not be sustainable. That is mm -hmm. always the case. But I really defend, maybe you will not uh, agree with that, but what I defend that the fact that you work together is for me a value in itself. The fact that you learn and you bring these people, and that's for me, you're bringing the people together with a different background and maybe also different stereotypes, you know, prejudices and all that. And you bring them together and they learn from it. And that I think is so important. If the tool at the end, and many tools have been developed to be honest, if they will not be used, okay, it's a pity because there is an investment 
but the, this risk remains. We cannot uh, help it. And maybe a last point, I think, uh, again, with, uh, with Irene said, at the end, what counts is this working together. Uh, as you called it, a continuum. I think uh, that's exactly uh, what we need, and we need more on that. And, um, and again, we need to think outside of the boxes. That's why this approach on um, professional higher education, vet and higher education, all this needs in you know, one way or another come together, but not in a harmonized way. <laughs> and, you know, just uh, last week, again, we were asked uh, somebody by the European Parliament, why is there not a European statute on apprenticeship? I don't even know what that means because we, the, diff, the systems are so different. Uh, there are no easy solutions to complex uh, issues. We have simply to admit that. Thank you.